Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, Jake, the one man band is back again and it is time once again because it's been a very long time for a anime review. I know I haven't been doing real well with getting these out to you. I mean, my last one my last one was about Sword Art Online. No, it wasn't. It was Madoku Magica, you stupid idiot. But for the past few months, I haven't really been all that much into anime lately. I mean, I've been having a lot of stuff going on. Lots of games came out. Been doing those. Lots of Ruby stuff. You know, things just get in the way. But, much like that 92% dark chocolate bar that you have stashed in the back of your refrigerator, every once in a while, you go back for a little bit more. And during my most recent escapades into the anime zone, one of the ones I came away with was Terraformers. It's an anime that really follows the idea that when humanity's gonna go out to the stars and into space, we're just going to get pretty much shat upon. Just due to the fact that we're humanity and we pretty much suck because Everything else has to be better than us. But to be fair, in the plot of Terraformers, it was pretty much our own fault. But for all the awesome and cool and original ideas and concepts that are in Terraformers, there were a lot of things in it that just kind of pet peeved me. That's a real term. There was just a lot of things in the show that didn't sit well with me due to the fact that it just went against my basic knowledge or just annoyed me due to the fact that I was all like, this has all happened before. Why is it still happening? So on the realms of this video, I think it is going to be probably closer to a review than my other uh, anime reviews that I've done. Just due to the fact that I'm going to be talking about elements in the show that I like and kinda didn't like. So anyway, let's get started! Alright, here's a pretty much rundown plot of Terraformers. Alright, so with the basic rundown of the plot done, now I'm going to get to some of the key factors of the story, the characters, the plot, and just pretty much everything that kind of irked me and that I kind of liked. So, number one, the mission. Alright, so the main story of Terraformers takes place during the third expedition to Mars. Now, okay, so this is the third time that humanity is going to Mars. Wouldn't you think that the humans would kind of learn from the mistakes of the past instead of sending maybe a hundred people to Mars. I mean, sure, each one of them is pumped up with spliced DNA and is able to turn into a half-human, half-animal slash insect monster thing that is able to kill cockroaches, but not like that. Take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away! But still, wouldn't you think it'd be a little easier to send, like, I don't know, combat mechs, robots, more than a hundred people. I mean, even they state in the anime and both the manga that pretty much the top 15 of the 100 passengers going to Mars, they're the only ones who are going to be fighting. And, well, me, myself, I cannot believe that one bit. You have an undetermined amount of enemies on a planet, and how many combatants are you sending? Fifteen. 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 Now, it would be different if it was like 15 Gokus or Vegetas or whoever the heck this guy is. Pretty much these 15 people, they're still vulnerable. They can still die. So, why are you only sending 100 people? But one of the good things I actually got from the whole mission thing is that it kind of shows how in times of crisis, the whole world will band together and fight as one against a common enemy. It's happened in the past when there have been tyrannical leaders, plagues going on, um, 
and just stuff along those lines where it was just something bigger than the whole of humanity is happening. So all of humanity bands together to combat it. And I think that's probably one of the better themes that this show is kind of por trying to portray. Number two, Mars. You, uh, looking all, looking all right there, Mars? You don't look like yourself. All right, what is wrong with this picture? I mean, seriously, what is wrong with this picture? This is Mars. Why isn't it red? Now, don't get me wrong. I find this really, really cool how this is an original concept for Mars. They have never really shown Mars terraformed like this in all the things that I have seen and played and read. I've never seen Mars be some lush green type planet like Earth, but we cannot forget it is Mars. And what is Mars known for? Instead of being a great god, being a red ball in the sky. It's named after Mars because it's red. Because Mars is the god of war. And what's spilled in war? Blood. Blood is red, so Mars is red. And I, I don't understand why it isn't red. I mean, in all the other movies and video games and books that I've... that have had Mars in them, Mars has always been red. I mean, sure, maybe there were some trees every once in a while. I mean, but still, Mars... All that red dust, that is rusted iron. And that doesn't just wash out in your mother's washing machine. You can't get rid of that much rust in 500 years. So unless the terraformer cockroaches got the bright idea to take all that dust and just sweep it underneath their giant carpets, I don't understand where all the red went. Number three characters. Now this probably is the strongest thing with uh, Terraformers that I liked, was the characters. Every single character that they actually go into detail about, I absolutely loved. And I have my two favorites, but we'll get to those in a little bit. One of the things I really liked about Terraformers is that all the characters are adults. Now it may just be the anime that I've been watching, the past few years, but there's always been a vast majority of the cast was uh, children or, you know, up to high school and college people. There wasn't really that many, quote, adults, unquote. You know, people who are actually out there in the world trying to get by. I mean, the one that really crosses my mind is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, where that had a very good base of characters that was divided with both young people and older adult people. I loved that. And I'm not saying that animes with young people are bad. I'm just saying that seeing an anime where there's actually older people being the main characters is a nice change of pace. I mean, I think the youngest person Part of the Annex 1 trip mission is Marcos, which was 16, I believe. But he doesn't boast the whole essence of being a 16-year-old. He's very mature for his age. And it's because of that that I actually liked his character. He wasn't that one person that I pointed out and it was like, oh, he's the kid of the trip. Obvi obviously, he's going to be the most immature of the bunch and stuff. Also, not only did every single main character have a little bit of definition put into them, but a little bit of growth as well. I mean, these growth moments can be hilarious or just downright beautiful in the sense that they're awesome. I mean, some of the ones that come to mind was the whole aspect that even though the main character, Akari, is uh, attracted to Michelle, she very distinctly tells him that if he looks anywhere below her neck, that she'll kill him. And it's that kind of stuff that's just funny because, uh, yeah, it's kind of dorky and, st and stuff if you really want to put it into those lines, but for a person like me, 
That's like real life. I mean, you wouldn't want somebody staring at your body in this kind of situation. You And besides, she's supposed to be his commanding officer. So she doesn't want him to see her as some sort of sex symbol. He, he, she wants him to look at her as a... Um, person of honor and a person of authority, which I think is very good character development. And even though later on in the story she kind of opens up to him a little bit more, she doesn't really lose that whole edge about her that she still is boasting the whole fact that she is his superior officer, but they're still somewhat in the friend status. He's getting friend zoned hard. And then there's also the whole aspect of the friendship between Sheila, Marcos, and Alex. I mean, these are three uh, childhood friends that end up finding each other once again in this project. And it's great how they all come together, and even though t terrible things ensue when Sheila gets killed, and then Marcos goes a little bit ape shit, and he doesn't die, but... Still, he goes crazy because of it. But it's because of those things that it really shows that they truly cared for one another. And now that she's gone, he's going to make sure that he keeps Alex alive, and Alex is going to make sure that he keeps Marcos alive. Because they're really the only friends that they've got now. Oh, and let me just say that in the anime, the one thing that I truly and thoroughly enjoyed was Adolf's entire story arc. I mean, oh my Oh my gosh, this guy was, he is badass status to, to the roof. He's really freaking cool. I mean, in the anime, he states that uh, when his crew is uh, surrounded by terraformers, he, it's only him and one other fighter in his group, and he says to the other one to go take on one big enemy, while well, he takes on 300 by himself. Adolf Reinhardt, hero of Thermopylae, killing terraformers. Plus, he's DNA spliced with an electric eel, which is just so cool. And then when you actually watch his arc, you see his backstory and just how tragic it is. And it's because of that tragic backstory that he cares so much for the people who are under him. To the fact that he's willing to basically throw himself into the meat grinder just to keep them safe for another few minutes. I mean, that entire arc was truly phenomenal. I just hate Ava because she didn't do anything! And now on to my second favorite character, Asimov, the big, burly Russian guy. I mean, this guy, he's, he's pretty top. I mean, he's like the oldest of all the members on this crew. And he's, a, he's a freaking badass. He's the kind of old geezer soldier guy that you want to have with, with you just due to the fact that he has experience in the world. And it really makes me think, why didn't they have more ex former soldiers in the Annex 1 program? Why was it just him and a few others? And why would you put them all on the same shuttle? But apart from Asimov being the big Russian scary military guy, he's also a very smart leader and a very caring one. He even goes as far as to totally stop the battle he's in to apologize to a subordinate of his because he wasn't able to stop the death of the subordinate's sister. I mean, that's not only is that reckless due to the fact that the enemy is still there, but that's showing that you truly care for your subordinates when you take the time out of your battle to the point where you can actually die to say that you are sorry for for doing this and causing the death of this other person. And on a side note, there is a part in the manga that actually isn't in the anime where Asimov is in the shower after beating the ever-loving crap out of a terraformer. He's just, you know, freshening himself up. And while in the shower, he starts singing the Lion King theme song. 10 out of 10. 100 out of 100. Ultimate badass. Ultimate badass. 
I mean, not only does this show that he is more than just a military jar head meathead guy, he's also someone who's willing to let go and sing in the shower. And it also kind of entails that he has watched The Lion King a couple of times, which is actually driven home a little bit more when you find out that he has a daughter who is en who ends up being sick with the illness that kills people. And it shows that he's a, he's a family man at heart, which I absolutely love. Yeah, and there's plenty of other characters in the story that are just totally awesome when it goes into their backstory and the reasons why they're on this mission. No one goes on the mission for their own selfish desires. They want to go, they wanted to go because they wanted to help people. And that kind of shows once again one of the good themes about this show is that they're not doing it for one country, they're not doing it for these reasons, but they're doing it for the greater good of number four. Wh why? Alright, throughout the series of me watching it, these were the things that I just found myself asking why about. Why didn't they do this? Okay, why didn't they send soldiers? Why didn't they actually send weapons? I know there is the whole thing with they didn't want to send weapons because they didn't want to arm the terraformers even more if the plan failed. Which once again comes back to the question, if the parameters of the mission where it going and then it coming back have a very low chance of success, why would you even try? I mean, sure you got a couple hundred, dozen, hundred people who are d sick with the virus. I mean, but still, it isn't like it's a pandemic yet. Why not bide your time? Research a little bit more. Get some more people for the job. Send more than one spaceship. S send some military. You know, send some mech suits. Send some airships that can actually provide air support. Why not... I mean, I understand that they probably want to keep it under wraps because they don't want there to be a big ol' panic due to the fact that, like, uh, uh, why are you sending all these people into space? Oh, it's because there's a deadly virus here that we can only find the cure on Mars. Wait, what was that about a deadly virus? Oh, nothing. We're just sending people into space. I understand that they probably wanted to keep it secret and under wraps, but still, you're dealing with a virus that will potentially destroy all of humanity if you don't find the cure. And I believe in the manga, it stated that the success rate of the mission and the rate of them actually making back to Earth alive fell to like 18%? Why would you even think of sending this mission to Mars if it's only 18%? I think you should only do crazy out of the world missions like this if the success rate is over 50. I mean, I understand that there has to be risks in science. In the Manhattan Project, they wouldn't have tested a nuclear bomb if it had an 18% success rate. It had a 99% success rate. The other 1% was that it would vaporize all the oxygen on Earth, destroy the atmosphere, and everything would die. Now, on the whole realm of actually taking weapons to Mars, I understand the concept of only the top 15 combat personnel having weapons due to the fact that they didn't want to supply the terraformers with more weapons, but wouldn't you want to try to arm the less skilled people? I mean, do you give Bruce Lee a AK-47? No, because he could kill a thousand men with just his fists! And it's not like the combat-ready people can't kill terraformers with their fists. That's what they kill them with! Why not give the lower class people the weapons that can actually do some damage? I understand that they have the whole net thing and they went there mostly to capture terraformers so that they can do research on them to find a cure, but how are you going to develop a cure if everyone is dead because nobody could have defended themselves? <sighs> this, how, how did it come to this? I'm getting worked up over a fictional Mars mission 500 years in the future. I don't understand. I guess what mostly irks me is that in a world where we've had movies like 
aliens and starship troopers where humans have been real cocky and have gone to hostile alien planets where they have been totally just squashed by the native bug species. It just makes me wonder, when are we going to learn from this? And when are we actually going to take things like this seriously? I mean, I understand we're not going to space yet, but it's still the whole concept. I mean, we're going to a very hostile place. Why don't we bring weapons? Why don't we go there with adequate personnel? Why? Why? I don't know, maybe I'm just rambling about random stuff and I have no right to criticize this anime like this, but all in all, at the end of the day, when I finished the 12, 13 episode season, I came out entertained. Even after everything that happened in the story and the little things that I didn't like, I found it overall very enjoyable. It reminded me a lot of Attack on Titan, not only with the animation similarities and the art similarities, but the whole concept that these humans are fighting against something that they're not actually really prepared for, and that they're outnumbered, outgunned, and maybe out of their league, but they're still going to continue to fight to find the answers that they need and get back home. And I actually found myself enjoying this anime more than I did Attack on Titan. Maybe it was because I found the characters more enjoyable. I mean, don't get me wrong, Attack on Titan has some pretty cool characters. But on the grand scheme of things, all the characters in Terraformers that are main characters, I all found very real and very enjoyable and I didn't want them to die. And then at the end of the anime there's all this idea of like betrayal where there's a sect of humans that are helping the terraformers and there's pyramids on Mars that were made by the gods of Rahab or something. And th what happened at the end of the anime was there was a lot of questions left behind. And that makes me hope, hope, that it will get a second season. I mean, I know that the manga is still ongoing, and, <laughs> and I do indeed know that the uh, English version of the manga is very, very much behind. The English manga version only got up to about halfway through the anime. So I'm hoping that the anime actually stays true to what the manga story is telling. And so I'm hoping that maybe this year or maybe next year we're going to be getting a season 2 of Terraformers. Because that would just be awesome and I would absolutely love it. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this little review that I did on Terraformers. I know it wasn't really what I'm used to doing where I overanalyze something and break it down and do all that kind of stuff. But I kind of really didn't want to do this with Terraformers. I wanted to actually tell you what I liked about it and just the things that kind of irked me. Because all in all, that's pretty much what a review should be. Is that you're reviewing something and I'm just going to shut up now. But still, hope you enjoyed. There's still going to be more anime reviews coming out in the future. I'll get to them eventually. Maybe. Probably. Could be happening right now. But until then, I will see you guys next time I'm out there in YouTube land. I'll see you then. Be a good person, tip your waitresses, and keep moving forward. And if you go to Mars, bring some really big...